I am Abby. I am Top Mat Stitcher. I am joined here, as always, by my little Pepperita. My little Oscar Pepper. I tried to get her up in that chair and she was not having it, so just know she's with us. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful weekend, or had a wonderful weekend, depending on how quickly I get this up. Um, here in the Bay Area, it was 10,000 degrees, and it was a rough... <laughs> It's a really rough weekend. Uh, we had a massive heat wave, which broke all kinds of records, and it was over 100 in like all the cities, including San Francisco, which is unheard of. Um, it was hot, and we are not prepared for that. There's not a lot of air conditioning, and we're a very pathetic group when it comes to extreme heat. So we coped, we went to the beach, we found places with air conditioning and just camped out there. Um, it was a rough, it was a rough week. Uh, but we all made it through. Right, Pepper? She was not a fan. Um, gave her a lot of, like, ice pillowcases to put in the freezer, and then she would lay on them. We all, we all made it. Um, it was actually kind of a, a nice treat in one way, because we went to the beach on Saturday, and typically the Pacific Ocean is a pretty chilly place, so it's rare to get a really good, warm beach day. Um, but this was an exceptionally hot beach day, um, where we actually got to swim in the Pacific Ocean for any amount of time we wanted without freezing. Um, and it was really nice to actually get to play in the waves. Typically, you would have a few people who would like run in and out um, for those who have wetsuits and are surfing, and no one else is really in the water which is fine because it's very, it's very breezy and wonderful. But you got to actually swim and body surf and play in the ocean and it was so much fun. So it was like the one, the one gift of the heat wave. However, now it is uh, going to be in like the mid seventies today uh, in all this week. So we are back to normal and it feels so nice. Um, I'm filming this really early in the morning because our, apartment does tend to get pretty hot. Um, we're on the third floor, so we get a lot of everyone else's heat as it rises. Um, so I am anticipating that it will get toasty in here, even though it's not too hot today. So we're doing this really early. It is too hot for hair and makeup. Um, got my iced coffee and got a lot to share with you. Sounds like a lot. Um, it's been a while been like a month since we last talked. Um, I work in education, so this is a really crazy back to school time of year. Um, it's been kind of nice because my job is really fun and challenging to be back in it and really like pushed to my limit, um, but in a really, just like a really good challenging way. Like it's a, there are a lot of puzzles that my brain gets to work out, um, a lot of problems to solve, a lot of decisions to make. And it's, it's just nice to see everything that we've been planning and planning and planning actually happening, but it's very tiring. So I have not gotten a ton of stitching in this month. Um, I have some. Really, I just haven't gotten any stitching in the last two weeks. But before that, I, I had a good chunk. Um, and I'm hoping I'll be able to come back sooner than a month from now, but who knows. So have a lot to share. I have a lot of like whip updates as far as my last video I talked about kind of my whip anxiety around how many do I want and what do I do and how do I work on them. Um, and so many of you responded with what you do and with advice and it was so helpful um, to help me kind of sift through all of my ideas and thoughts and really filter it down to a few actionable things. Um, so we'll talk about that. I've reached a few discoveries. Um, I have three new starts to share. One of them is already finished, so a finish and two new starts. I have progress on my other two pieces. I have a non-stitching finish to share. I have a lot of thrift finds to share with you all. Um, I have a couple books. I have a couple shout outs. Um, probably some other things that I'm forgetting, but hopefully I'll get to them. <laughs> So we just, we got a lot, a lot to do. So let's, let's jump into it. Um, 
we will start, I guess, talking a little bit more about whips. Um, so like I said, a lot of you, a lot of you shared advice and just shared what you do, um, and why, and it was just so helpful. That's my laundry timer. Um, it was just so helpful to read about and, you know, all of you were like, do whatever works for you. And I was, um, just, I'm just so grateful for all of your advice because there is no like right or wrong answer, right? It's like whatever, whatever works best for you, but I didn't know what worked best for me. Um, but now I have made a few discoveries. So the first of which is that I really love having at least one small project going at a time because it feels so good to finish those. <laughs> Duh. Um, so that was really helpful to really like solidify, like, yes, I want to have something that is little, that is always, like, always something small that I can work on um, to really have a project where I can see quick progress on things as a nice um, change from like a big full coverage monster. Um, so that was a helpful, helpful little thing. Um, the second thing I discovered is that I hate starting things. I will put it off until the end of time. So I started three things in one day and it was amazing. I just sat down, I ironed, I counted, I put in the first couple lengths of thread and now I have three projects that are ready to go and ready to be worked on whenever I feel like it without me saying, well, I don't really want to like take the time to actually start it. Um, cause I noticed I was doing that a lot of like, I want to work on house of cooking, but I don't want to start it. <laughs> so I started all the things. Um, and I think that's something I will do in the future of just every two months, three months. I don't really know what it will be. Um, but just to set aside a few hours to start multiple projects, it is a total game changer. And if you are like me and don't like starting things, I totally recommend it. Um, cause now I have things that are just ready to be worked on when I feel like it. Um, and not just sitting forever un untouched. <sighs> Let's see. The third thing that I found was that I was really looking to add some structure to my stitching because I didn't want it to be super regimented, like a really strict rotation. Um, and at the time I didn't have a whole lot of pieces I was working on anyway. Um, but I liked the idea of having at least a little bit of guidance so that if I sat down to stitch but didn't really know what I wanted to stitch, I could just look at a list, pick it up and go. So I've settled on an approach that so far is working really well for me to choose like two or three projects and set a really specific progress goal for those for the end of the month. So I have some goals that I'm working towards for the end of September. I set them in the middle of August, but six weeks, whatever. Um, and so I'm working towards those goals, but it gives me enough flexibility that I can stitch on other things in the meantime. Um, and once I reach those goals, I can either go ahead and set my next month or just stitch on whatever I feel like. Um, and it has totally changed the way that I stitch, which has been really, really nice. So my goals for the end of September, um, I'll share these pieces. Um, well, I can just share them right now. My first goal for the end of September was to finish my... O whale. Um, here we go. This is to the beach, uh, hands on design by Kathy Haberman. O whale. <laughs> so cute. My goal is to finish this piece because it's pretty small. It's like five by seven. Um, and I was really excited to do it. And we've been kind of redecorating the apartment and this has a place to go in our bathroom. So I wanted to make sure it happened. I started this as one of my three projects and then this was the one that I kept wanting to pick up so I just kept working on it and then it was done in like four days um, and it was amazing and look at that ah a whale I love it so much um, I don't think these are picking up super well on camera but these this is like a mint green little whale whale spouts um, I love it. it. I think it's hilarious. Um, this is stitched in Gentle Arts, which was my first time using Gentle Arts, and I really enjoyed it. I don't think it's picking up, well, you can see that one a little bit. It's, it gives the whale some nice splotchiness, which I think looks great. Um, and I really liked stitching in hand-dyed threads, and I will do that 
in the future to be sure. Um, quick sidebar, I smashed my thumb in a window yesterday. Because I'm me. So if I randomly say, ow, that's why. Um, it doesn't look gross. So I, it's getting a little bruised. Um, it's very, very tender. So if I'm randomly shouting in pain, I promise I'm actually fine. <laughs> um, anyway, I stitched this in all the called for threads in Gentle Arts. I stitched this on a 32 count blue bonnet in the color platinum, which is like a light tan color. It looked pretty close to the picture. Um, I need to learn how to center my work. Oh well. Um, oh, oh well. <laughs> ah, such a keeper. Um, and then I did make a couple changes. Um, very, very small ones. Um, this little banner under this whale, it's got the mint doodads. I don't know. They were supposed to be in gray, which is the same color as the biggest whale, and I thought that looked really clunky and strange. Um, plus where this is going in the bathroom, we have another print in there that has the same mint and the same kind of terracotta coral color. Um, so I wanted a little bit more mint in there to match it. And I think that looked really nice. Um, and then this anchor was supposed to be stitched in the same color as the border, which I, um, I didn't like cause it didn't, it didn't stand out like it could. So I just put it in gray. So I was super proud of my color changing abilities. And I'm just really proud of this piece. Um, I have a frame for it, but since I did not center it very well, I had to go get a mat for it. Um, so that's one of my goals this weekend is to finish framing this and get it up. So hopefully I will get to it. I was going to do it last night, but it was really hot. So I just laid on the floor with a fan and a wet pillowcase across my person. And it's done. Hooray. Um, I thought, oh, that chart is going to my mom who has a couple other others in the series. Um, and maybe once she stitches hers, I will take them and add to my collection. Okay, moving on. Guys, I hope, I hope I'm making sense because I have my iced coffee here and I have not finished my iced coffee. And that is kind of unheard of. Excuse me, usually I drink my coffee first thing in the morning. It's almost nine. I've been up for three hours and I haven't finished my coffee. I don't know if any of this will make sense. But it's fine. Let's keep going. This one I have to take out of the cute snap. My next new start was a cute little piece that I received from Itty Bitty Stitchy Brittany. Uh, this is House of Cooking. I love it so much. Uh, it's my first time stitching <clears throat> anything in this like primitive style um, and I'm really enjoying it. So this is what I have so far, House of Cooking. Um, it's a pretty little piece, it just goes over probably about here um, for the rest of the house, maybe less than that. I was working on this after work this month um, and I made a really, really, a really big counting error. So down here, there are a couple windows and a shelf. And I had those totally stitched. And I was feeling so proud of myself. And I was ready to start stitching the lady who goes right here. And I realized I put my windows right up where her face is supposed to be. Um, so I spent a couple hours ripping out a lot of stitching. And it was it's the first time I've had to do that where I wasn't just ripping out some, like some little mistake that I caught right away. It was rough. <laughs> so I haven't, I haven't stitched since I did that earlier this week. Um, anyway, I'm stitching this on a piece of 32 count Belfast linen that I got at a thrift store. My, my first thrift store cross stitch find and what I thought was going to be my only until I went to a thrift store this week. Um, I don't love stitching on linen. It it makes me really nervous because some of the some of it is just really uneven, and it all looks totally fine um, once it's in place. But it ooh, 
it makes me super nervous to stitch. Um, but I'm really, I'm really enjoying that. I'm excited to finish this soon. Um, my goal, I had like a, a secondary goal if I finish the whales early was to finish at least half of House of Cooking. Um, so we're on to a good start with that, even with my mistake. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm really, I'm really loving that piece. So, let's see, I just want to get it back on the piece net. My third and final new start was this Ink Circles Chalkboard Mandala, which I bought at a shop in Kentucky. And I really love this. It's my first time stitching on a hand dyed fabric. Ooh, isn't that pretty? I don't know how well it's picking up, but it's got a real nice, it's, it's gray. <laughs> That's all I need in life. <laughs> Just gray. Um, this is hand dyed fabrics by, hand dyed fabrics by Stephanie and I am obsessed. I chickened out and I just got Ada because when I ordered it, I hadn't stitched on anything else and I was going to get the called for linen, I think. Um, but I just got Ada, which is fine. <laughs> so this is a 16 count Ada. There's my start. I really love this piece. I really love ink circles. Um, I love stitching in just one color. It is so quick and so handy. I also feel like it is really efficient. I'm not wasting any thread. Um, and that makes me happy. And I just really love it. I, I've, I love patterns like this that are just like a mandala um, or some type of geometric print and symmetric whatever. Um, I haven't actually stitched anything like it before, so I'm loving it. I want to go stitch all of all of these patterns I can find. Um, so that is it for my new starts. I started those three. Started the three. Pretty much just worked on the whales until it was done, and now I'm pretty much am just working on House of Cooking. Um, so I might pull this one out um, during the week because I don't super trust my counting skills uh, while work is so crazy. So we'll see. We'll see what I end up doing this week. Um, quick update on Project Bag Life. I love it so much and I really, really want to figure out how to make my own, but I don't have a sewing machine. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes, but I really love... Um, how nice and tidy this is compared to my tote bag system, which is what I've typically done, which is like totally fine, but it looks kind of sloppy and boring in comparison. That's a problem for later. So let's move on. Um, my second cross stitch, oh, I put it on the bed and she's coming to lay on top of it. Yep, a new, new cat pillow. Um, my second goal for the end of September was related to my little Harry Potter sampler piece. So last time you saw this, I had half of Hermione and I had all of Ron. I've now finished the three of them, which was my goal, was to finish Harry. This is my new needle minder that I got from Drew of Weasley Studios. He very kindly sent me a little... Harry Potter package and he was like you need you need a Harry Potter needle minder and I said yes I do <laughs> um so Dumbledore has been a great help on this Harry Potter piece I love having a real needle minder and not just a cheap magnet I love having one that actually matches my pattern I totally understand why that is so adorable and appealing <laughs> um and I love it this is uh from Jen of Delicious Threads and I highly recommend that you go check her out. Um, I also have complained and commented and angsted over the colors in this pattern every time I've talked about it. And I'm here to tell you officially that I am accepting the colors as charted. I, I'm just not, I'm not going to um, complain about them because I... I'm clearly not going to do anything about it. I'm just going to complain. So I've yet to really make any big substitutions and I'm just going to embrace it and 
be happy with them. Um, so you can hold me, you can hold me to that, please. I did, I have changed a couple little things, like, Harry was, he was charted, um, to have, like, a little badge here, and then his scarf was just on one side, and I didn't think that he deserved a badge, because, um, like, Hermione is a prefect, so she's got a badge. Ron has his scarf that kind of covers it. Maybe he has his prefect badge. I don't know. And I was like, Harry could have his Quidditch captain badge, but I didn't like it. So I gave him, I just gave him an off-centered scarf because I thought that was very Harry that he would be like untidy. So I really love, love how they've turned out. Um, I have one more row of characters below them. So that's probably going to be my goal for the end of October that I might go ahead and start working on now if I feel like it. Um, I think it's Hagrid, Dumbledore, and Dobby. And they're just like that. So I'm really loving them. This is a pattern um, by Stitch Line on Etsy. And I recommend it. It's very, very cute. Oh, they're so cute. Um, so, ouch. Oh, hit my thumb. That's Harry. One more whip to talk about. Put that one away. Um, this is another pattern by Stitch Line on Etsy. Oh, maybe we can. Here we go. Um, get this out of the way. Okay. Um, you can't see a whole lot because it's rolled up. I don't have. Let's talk about scroll frames for a second. This is Hogwarts. My goal for the end of September is to finish this page. So I'm about halfway done. Um, I really love this piece. <laughs> Hogwarts Castle at night. I love it so much. Um, it's a lot of black and navy. So I have to really be... I'm at a point right now where it, it's kind of boring, no matter what, <laughs> to stitch black and navy. So... Um, my goal is to finish this, and then I think I'll, I might put this away for a month or two. Um, let's, let's talk about frames. This frame I bought on Amazon um, about a year ago. It is a Goncharoff frame, something like that. Um, it's got little clips that attach your fabric to the scroll bars. Oh, there they are. These, these little plastic clips. Um... And I really like it. It was like $50, I think, and it's a really nice lap stand. At the time that I bought it, there were a lot of sizes available. So there were a lot of these bars and you could buy bigger or smaller. So this was kind of their medium frame, but they had, I think like four or five sizes. And I just thought, great, I'll try this out. If I like it, I'll get another size. Um, and obviously this piece doesn't doesn't fit on here. Um, I've just, I had rolled it up on the side um, to make sure that I liked having this frame before I spent more money on it. I went back to buy a longer frame and they don't sell them on Amazon anymore and I can't find them anywhere else. And I don't know if I could just find another similar piece. Um, like it just has a little screw I feel like I could find something that has the same size screw or like my dad is an engineer and I bet he could help me figure this out um, if I bring it home. But if anyone has this frame or has any idea of what I'm talking about, please, please let me know um, if you know where I could find longer bars or if you have advice for mixing brands of frames that would be really great. It's a pretty simple, it's just, it's just a wooden dowel, well, like a wooden rod, and then it's got a little groove for the clips, but it should be pretty simple to tap, I'm hoping. But if anyone knows, please let me know. Um, because this, clearly, rolling it on two sides is not going to work for me, so I need to switch this over to something else. Anyway. That is all my stitching progress. Let's get that back under there. Um, let me see my notes. Hold on. Ba -ba -ba. 
have talked about all of that. Okay, let's talk about the thrift store. Um, I have, I am not a skilled thrift store shopper. It is not one of my gifts. I really like the concept um, to find things to reuse and repurpose. I love that in theory, uh, but in reality, I get really overwhelmed really fast. So I can enjoy about the first five minutes. And then my brain just sees clutter everywhere and it, I just can't handle it. So I don't, I'm not really good at picking through that to find new potential for, for things. Um, I wish that I had a better eye for that because I like it in theory. Um, but there is a really cool thrift store near me that is like a creative reuse center. So they have a lot of different, a lot of typical thrift store things like frames and mugs and jars and baskets and random, random normal thrift items. Um, but then they also have a huge section of different like craft and art supplies. Um, so it's a place where a lot of teachers will go. If you are doing like a craft project and you need toilet paper tubes, they have them. If you need a random assortment of Legos, they have them. Like they have all kinds of things. Um, some that are typical craft supplies, like paintbrushes and half-used bottles of paint, um, lots of yarn, lots of stickers, lots of pins, lots and lots and lots of things. Um, a lot of kind of unconventional materials, like you can get, um, like I, when I went in, I pulled out a bin and it was full of like plastic soap dispenser pumps. I don't know what you would do with that, but I'd be super curious to see some artwork made with that. It's just a really cool place, um, and they have a lot of cool stuff, but it is not, like, super well organized. Like, I pulled out a bin that said buttons, and it was full of, uh, like, uh, bouncy balls. So you have to really, really look. Um, they try to sort things. They try to label things, but it's, like, a total mess. It also stresses me out because most things are not priced. Uh, they just kind of give you a price up, up at the front. So uh, that makes me nervous sometimes. Um, anyway, they have a couple sections of like knitting and textile things. Hi, Pepper. She's back. Hello. Hi, little nugget. Here she's come. Got my stitching. Um, they have a, a big section of fabric and yarn and random crafty textile-y things, but again, not super well sorted. So I've been in the past and mostly just found knitting stuff. Um, I did find one chart that came with a piece of, that piece of linen and I, I bought that. Hi, what are you doing? Goodness, she's, she's very into a piece of bubble wrap down here. I don't know why. Um, anyway, I've looked before. I've not had a lot of luck. Um, but this time I went in and I was like, I might as well. I went looking for frames, but I was like, I obviously might as well check out their craft um, fabric-y section. And I found um, a shelf that had a bunch of magazine folder boxes full of crafty charts and things. And they were on the back of the shelf, so there was a ton of stuff in front that I had to move. Um, and a lot of them were knitting related, but a lot of them were cross-stitch. And oh my goodness. Do you see that? I got all that at the thrift store. Um, so I went through and it was, I mean, there were, I probably looked through like 200 books of things. Um, there was a lot of knitting and a lot of sewing and crocheting and quilting things that I obviously skipped over. Um, but there were a lot of cross stitch. I sorted through and kind of, you know, didn't, it didn't get anything that was really ugly or outdated. Um, I tried to only pick up things that I knew that I wanted to stitch or that had at least one small part that I wanted to stitch. Um, or that I kind of 
based on what I've seen around the cross-stitch world online, um, things that I knew I could probably find a home for. Um, none of these were priced. There were a couple that had like old stickers from their previous lives in previous shops. Um, there were a couple that were marked as a dollar or 50 cents, but I didn't, I couldn't tell if that was from this shop or not. Um, so I just kind of grabbed anything that looked good and figured if they super overpriced, um, super overcharged me, I would go through and filter a little bit more. But I got like 20 some charts. I'm not going to go through everything, but I will share just a couple, a couple highlights. Um, the first one I, I just showed, I got a Mirabilia. Um, this is The Kiss. It is a pattern from 95. Um, it is out of print, but not too hard to find online. And it's really pretty. I don't think I'm going to stitch it myself, um, but I was thinking I might see if I, oh, well, I might see if I can trade this for another pattern. That's my hope. I will add all of these all of these goodies, I obviously have a few things that I want to stitch. My mom has claimed a few things, but I also wanted to be able to share some things. I haven't figured out what that will be or how I will do it, so um, stay tuned in the future for for that. Um, a lot of this is old, so I don't want to uh, like sprinkle it around and stick people with junk, like cross-stitch junk that they don't want. Um, but if it's cross-stitch junk that they do want, not that it's junk, but you know what I mean. Like, I'm not going to send you a pattern from the 80s if you definitely don't want to stitch that. Um, so we'll we'll talk about it more in the future, but uh, I was just so excited because I don't have, like, a big stash at all. And now I have, like, my own, my own little lab, my own cross-stitch library, which is very cool. So this is definitely the crowning jewel of my collection. But I did find three other, like, recent pieces. Um, most of this is from the 90s, a few things from the 80s, but then I found three things from this decade, or at least from the 2000s. Um, so the first one is from By Big Toe Cross Stitch Designs, and it's just a little, a little piece that says, This too shall pass, um, which comes from a Bible verse. Um, I don't like a lot of text in my personal decorating, so I probably won't stitch this, but it's from just a few years ago. I've never heard of this designer, but I thought it was pretty. I also got an Ink Circles piece. This is Celtic quilts, corn, and beans. It's a nice little quick design. Um, I probably won't stitch inside one either, but I know that I can find it a good home. Um, and then this one I will stitch and I'm really excited about. This is Flower Sampler Alina. And this is by Stickadine von der Weihenberg, um, which is the same designer as the lion piece that McKenna just finished. And it looks stunning. Um, and I really love this. I might not stitch the whole piece, but I might just do, you know, part of it. Um, but I figure I should stitch some kind of sampler, and this one is very pretty, and was basically like 10 cents. Oh, I have to get, I have to get to uh, my, I'll tell you at the end how much I paid for everything. Um, most of this I'm not going to show you in great detail. They're just old, old charts, a couple old magazines. Um, there were a couple things that I got home and was like, why did I pick you up? And had to really look for the reason, and I think there are a couple I kept by mistake. Um, but like, for example, this, this book has a bunch of these little quilt country basket designs. I don't want to do any of that. But do you see that little cat? There's a little quilt with a cat on a shelf snoozing. And that is what I'm going to stitch and put in Oscar Pepper's snoozing spot in the hallway. And I'm super excited. Um, so there were a lot of things like that. I feel like I had a better eye for picking out little elements that I might want to do. Um, like here is a book that has three different samplers. All of these are pretty, but very dated. Um, but I really liked this bird. So I'm going to stitch that bird and then probably not the rest. Um, this is a very pretty wedding sampler. This one talks about friendship and it's got really cute bunnies. 
and then this one is just birds and flowers. But I just liked that bird. So it was a pretty it was a pretty fun time to to look through. I still need to go through them in greater detail. Um, let's see if there's any other big winners. Oh. I want to make all of those. <laughs> four seasons, four cats. Um, oh, this was another really cute one. This is Carol Emmer. Carol Emmer designs Hearts to God. And this is, look, look at those little sheep. Oh, they're so cute. So I was thinking that might be a nice, cute little baby gift for somebody. Um, there's like a little sampler and it says, Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Um, there's a little Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep. Looks kind of bookmarky. There's a bookmark that says, Blessed Be Those Who Read. Very cute. So I love that. Um, yeah, more to come in the future. I gotta look through these and remember why I bought them all. So very excited. Um, felt very lucky to find, find so many goodies. And then... Around the corner was another section of like sewing supplies, and I saw a bin that was labeled embroidery floss, and I thought, that sounds like it was made for me, and pulled it out, and it was just like a big tangled mess of like things were not in skeins. They were just, it was just a big mess of, of thread. <laughs> um, so hopefully they sort that out. I don't know if that means maybe they do occasionally get actual thread in. Um, there were lots of spools of sewing thread. There were lots and lots of uh, cones of um, like cotton thread and yarn, lots of yarn, but no embroidery materials. But next to that, I found a bin that was full of kits. I had never seen anything like it before. Um, so I got nine fully kitted things. One of them I bought by mistake. <laughs> Uh, but I was just going through and pulling out anything that was a complete kit that um, looked interesting, and then I sifted through and pulled out the ones that I did not like um, or that were incomplete. There were a lot of things. Um, there was, like, an embroider your own vest project that was very interesting. Um, and then there were a lot of, like, half-done things. Not even half-done. Started things. Um that were missing, missing parts and all mixed up. Like these were all, you know, bagged together, but there were some that were just like, here's the pattern. Oh, there's the chart. Oh, or the fabric. Oh, here's maybe the floss for it. It was, it was kind of a mess. I really wanted to just organize everything in the store, but I didn't. So, um, I did find a couple really good little projects. Um, again, I'm not going to share every single thing. Um, but I found three of these little lighthouse kits which were very cute. My mother has claimed them. Um, one more, Cape Hatteras. So, came with all their DMC. Um, there was another little lighthouse kit that came with a plastic hoop, which I've never used, but I thought I might, might try. Um, I did get it. <laughs> This is the one I bought by mistake. This is where I just pulled out all the kits and then I was going back through them and somehow I accidentally bought this one, which is a little baby announcement of our baby. This little old fashioned couple. This is from 1982. Comes with everything, including the lace. Um, if you would like to stitch this, leave a comment below. I would love to find it a good home. Um, it's pretty old. It's all wrapped up but I'm guessing it probably smells musty in some way. But if you want to take that risk, or if you just really want this chart, um, leave a comment. I'll just send it to whoever comments first, because so, I'm not expecting a ton of interest. Um, let me know. Um, and then I also found this Dimensions kit, which is the magic of summer, and it's a little kite shop. It says Chuck's Kites. Uh, but he's out flying, so he's closed right now. Um, I thought that was very cute in summary. It comes with everything, so I probably won't stitch that. Um, but I'm hoping I can find out what to do with that. So, oh, one other really cool thing. 
this is another really, really old chart. Um, but it came with the coolest frame. So this is a little nativity scene. Baby Jesus is very old, very yellowed. Uh, came with fabric and thread that <laughs> needs to be replaced. But it comes with this really cool uh, stable frame. So you put your piece in, glue on this, and then that just sits on a shelf. Isn't that cool? Um, so I'm going to make that. I think I might try to find a slightly... I might try to find a different nativity scene that will fit in this dimension. Um, and if not, I'll just stitch this. But I just thought that was so neat. Okay, so in total I got like 22 charts, I think. Maybe more. Or 22 charts or pattern books and three magazines. Nine kits. Guess how much I paid. $10 for all of that. I was so excited. I mean, I got up there and she, I had a couple of the like really old things were on the top, not on purpose, but she like looked at it and she looked at me and I could tell she was like, why would you, like, why are you buying this? Um, and she kind of like rifled through it a little bit and she was like, how about 10 bucks? And I said, yes, that sounds great. So best thrift day ever. Super excited. Um, Super excited. So I'll be sharing some things in the future, as I said. Um, but if you would like to stitch that little baby, leave a comment. If you would be interested in trading mirabilias, send me an email. Uh, Topknotstitcher at gmail.com. Maybe we can talk. Um, oh, one other thing I found, which I don't understand what it is, but I just grabbed it and then I forgot to decide if I wanted it, and then it was just included in my $10, so I said that's fine. Um, I got this vinyl weave, Crafter's Pride. Um, it is a 14 count, 12 by 18 piece. Its tag says that it is indestructible, with an exclamation mark. Um, easy to stitch, won't ravel, rip, or shrink, washable. What, what do you do with this? Um, is this more for like needlepoint? Can I cross stitch on it? Should I cross stitch on it? What would this be good for? It's kind of, it's very like pliable, um, but it's definitely plasticky. I don't understand. I don't understand it, but I bought it. Um, so if you know what I should use this for, let me know because I don't get it. <laughs> I haven't looked into this at all either, so I could do my own research. All right, that is it for my thrifting. I do have one other non cross stitch thrift to find that I got at a different shop. Um, I stopped in to a Goodwill to get forks for our office because they have all disappeared from the kitchen. And I stumbled across two frames that perfectly fit what I needed, but haven't yet really looked for. Um, and I want to share with you, and I, again, I channeled McKenna and did my own framing yesterday. And I'm really, really proud of these and really, just really happy to have them. Um, so my grandmother passed away in the spring. Um, and she was really incredible and amazing in all, always. Um, and I have a pretty big family, um, and we're all pretty close. Um, so it's been a really hard year. Um, but she, she was an artist and she painted and, um, we had, each family had a couple of her paintings. Um, so there were a lot that I hadn't seen, um, in many years or ever, um, but we displayed them all at her at her service, and it was really cool to get to see. And then my family also had the great idea to turn a few of them into little prayer cards that we handed out um, at her funeral. And 
<laughs> um, I just kept them trying to figure out like what was the, the best way to to display them and then I stumbled across these frames which were perfect and um, let me just show you <laughs> so I have these two two little cards that she painted I don't really know the stories behind any of these paintings um, I know we have a photo well so we have this this lovely lady these lovely flowers um, and then there's also this one. Isn't she amazing? Um, so we have a photo of her working on an easel with a photo of, I can't remember which one, one of these, <laughs> like a photo of, of something. I, I can't remember. We have a photo of her working on them using a, a picture for reference. Um, but other than that, I don't know. I don't know the, the story behind these, um, but we made those four into prayer cards and then I found these frames, which someone had hand cut these mats, um, which is something that I was not prepared to do yet. <laughs> um, and they had, uh, so I, I, I ripped apart the, the back of the frame and taped in these cards. Um, Uh, I'm, I'm just really, I'm really happy with them. I'm really happy with how they turned out. Um, and the frames were like a dollar each, which makes me happy and would make grandmommy super happy as well. Um, she was very thrifty and I just love them. And then on the back of the card, um, it has a poem, which is from, it's a, a Wendell Berry poem. Um, and she had a book on her nightstand, and it was open to this page. And it is what we printed on the prayer cards. And I'm going to read it. I tremble with gratitude for my children and their children who take pleasure in one another. Oh, no. <laughs> <clears throat> At our dinners together, the dead enter and pass among us in living love and in memory, and so the young are taught. It's so pretty. So thank you for sharing that moment with me. Now I just have to figure out where to hang those because um, I want to hang them in every room. <laughs> so I got to figure that out. Whew. We're good. Um, I feel like I should just end it here, but I have a few more things I want to share with you. So we're going to keep going. I'm not crying. It is okay to cry, but I'm not crying right now. Here we go. Um, I have a couple, oh, I have a couple shout outs that I skipped over. So let's do those. Um, I mentioned this earlier, but Drew Weasley of Weasley Studios sent me a needle minder. He sent me the cutest Harry Potter package. It was a total surprise. I... I came home from the room. It was like, you got a weird package. And I was like, what, is, what does that mean? She's like, I don't, I don't know who it's from. Um, and I looked at it. I was like, I do. It's a present. Um, and so it was so much fun. It came on a day. It came like after I had a new team of people starting um, and it came their first day. So I had been like in really intense trainings and like in super facilitator mode. And I was like really exhausted and fried. And I came home and I had this amazing package. So it was like perfect timing. It made me so happy. Um, and it had my little needle minder. It had a couple little Harry Potter charts in it. And then it also, because Drew is thoughtful and smart, and maybe he put this together on, an, on his own. But if not, then Drew, let me tell you. Um, so he sent me, oh, I don't know where it is. He sent me a floss box because I had just talked about how this was my first one. And he was like, I don't need this one. So I thought I would, would share it, which again was perfect because I've run out of room and needed one. Um, but it also made me so happy because I'm very into zero waste and cross stitch is not a super zero waste friendly hobby. Um, there's a lot of plastic involved and there's a lot of like you have to buy things in order to do, but you don't have to buy things. You can 
or like you can buy all brand new things you can thrift um, and find things to reuse but in you know it is not a minimalist hobby um, as much as I tried to let it be um, so it made me really happy that I had run out of room in my floss organization and would have had to go buy a new box but Drew sent me his and I got to reuse something instead of buying it new so thank you so much Drew <laughs> um, it has already helped me even just having that one visual cue of like oh I'm reusing this has helped me just to be a little bit more mindful of what I have and making sure that I am if I have something I don't need or don't use or won't need all of that I'm finding another purpose for it or a new home for it um, something I've been thinking about a lot of just how do I um, manage my cross-stitch stash well in that sense so thank you Drew and if you don't watch Drew and Phil, please go do that because they're amazing. And Drew's doing the Raven Queen and he's color, he's doing a conversion and it's amazing. Um, he's changing like everything in it and it looks, it looks so stunning. So um, go check out what he's up to. Let's see. Next up, I had another shout out. Where are my notes? Oh, Atomic Stitches who I discovered thanks to Michelle Bendy Stitchy. Um, she is adorable and amazing, and she's been making videos for a while, but she's like super under the radar, and I feel like we all need to change that because she's super talented. Um, she's doing a Renaissance mermaid, I think. I think that's what it's called. She's doing a really beautiful mermaid, and it is like her tail is silk and shiny and amazing, and it is stunning. Um, she just did a whip parade video, which she called the shortest whip parade. Um, I think she had like five or six projects, which I really appreciated because I feel like it fits with a lot of us, right? Like we're not all uh, super, not prolific, because we are prolific stitchers. We're amazing stitchers. Um, but you know, like you don't have to have 30 whips to do a whip parade. And I really liked that. Um, but she's doing the Save the Stitches piece in teal and cream and it is gorgeous and I want to go and steal it from her and hang it up with my teal quilt. I won't do that but go check her out because it's beautiful. Um, I'm trying to think if I can remember <laughs> who else I was going to talk about. I cannot so we'll just stop there for shout outs. We're not stopping entirely. Um, I have a couple books to share, but don't go anywhere because the first couple are cross-stitch books. I read a lot. I do not read a lot of this cozy mystery genre that exists all over. Um, I do have a couple that I got at the library book sale that have cats, so this is a whisker of trouble. Um, I haven't actually read it. I started it and didn't finish. Um, I don't read a lot of these, but they're very fun, very quick, very uh, cozy and cheesy and silly, um, but a fun a fun mystery because I usually get bored when I read like real mystery novels. Not that these aren't real, but anyway, they, this like cozy mystery thing. They have like a whole craft subgenre. Um, there's a scrapbook mystery series, there's obviously knitting I've seen before, there's sewing, there's quilting ones, there's stamping ones, like any craft you can think of, there's probably a mystery series for it. So did you know that there's a cross-stitch mystery series? It's so much fun. So I stumbled across this on Amazon, it came up in my suggested books, and I tried to find them in a bookstore near me and couldn't, so I ordered them on Amazon, and they were like four dollars. This is The Quicken the Thread by Amanda Lee. Do you see that dog? That's Wally. So this is a story of a girl from San Francisco who moves to a little town in Oregon and op opens an embroidery shop. And it's amazing. She moves with her Irish wolfhound, whose name is like Angus or something. But I totally just called him Wally as I was reading because that's Wally. Um, it's really, really fun. Uh, they're solving a mystery, a couple mysteries, a couple murders, um, and talking about cross-stitch the whole way through. So she's like, has classes and 
She's teaching the whole town how to stitch, and she talks about a lot of different types of embroidery. She talks about a lot of different, you know, industry things. Um, there were maybe two parts where I was like, no, that's wrong. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not how that works. Um, but for the most part, it seemed, it seemed pretty accurate. Other than she stitch, seems to stitch all the time, like all she does at work is either look for clues or she stitches. I don't know how she keeps her shop open. Um, and she seems to stitch super fast. <laughs> but I can forgive that. It's really, really fun. I highly recommend it. Um, I loved it and wasn't going to... There are ten books in the series. I wasn't going to immediately read the next book in the series, but then I did. <laughs> So the next one is called Stitch Me Deadly, and there's Wally, um, another murder, another mystery, and she's out to solve it. And of course, there's a love triangle, and of course, her best friend owns the shop next door, and so there's best friend drama. Um, it is just the most delightful, delightful little series, and I highly, highly recommend them. Um, McKenna. If you are interested in reading this and checking out Wally, um, please let me know and I would love to send this to you. Otherwise, I'll be sending it out in some future sprinkly, stitchy package to someone. But McKenna, I will give you dibs on this because it is a true delight. Um, she doesn't talk about the whole, the dog, like a whole lot other than, you know, she's like taking care of him and they go to the beach um, and he's really sweet and great. But I wish I, he, he, I wish he was more of a character, <laughs> um, but he does make lots of appearances and it's very, very cute. So let me know. Um, one other book, a non-stitchy book. So if you're not interested, then thanks for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful stitchy time. Um, but I decided that I needed a back to school treat to myself and there was an anniversary, a 20th anniversary this summer, the 20th anniversary of the release of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, and they did a very wonderful thing. They created anniversary editions, and they are very beautiful, and I decided that I needed one, obviously. So I, they're not, I can't find them anywhere for sale here, so I looked, um, on Amazon and they were all like $25 plus shipping and I was like I love Harry but I'm not paying $25 for a paperback or a hardback <laughs> um but then I happened to find the one that was $8 on Prime and so I got <gasps> Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone Slytherin it's gorgeous it's green look at the ends it's green! Um, on the back, Bloody Baron. Inside, there's like Slytherin specific bonus content. So it's got like history of the house and like famous Slytherins, things like that. Um, I was really excited to buy this one because, first of all, it's gorgeous. They're all gorgeous, but green is beautiful. Um, but my cat is a Slytherin, so this is her book. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Um, but here's the thing. Once this arrived, I was like, oh, it's stunning. And my goal is to have a Harry Potter library, but what if these go away? Because it's an anniversary edition. So I got myself on Book Depository and I bought the whole set. I bought eight copies of The Philosopher's Stone because there's one for each house in paperback and there's one for each house in hardback. And the hardback ones are black with uh, like a green embossed or whatever color embossed and then like striped end, end, no, not end pages, but edges. So I bought two sets of books. So I now own, in California, I own one copy of The Deathly Hallows. I own this copy of The Philosopher's Stone and I am soon to own a total of nine copies of The Philosopher's Stone. So. As I've been rereading the series in reverse, um, I'll get to Philosopher's Stone and have to pick which one copy to read. But then I was like, what if for nine months I just read one of them <laughs> until I've read them all? You might say that's a little ridiculous. 
I think it sounds great. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, I'm super excited. It was a really nice, like, back-to-school treat to myself. Um, I have to exercise a lot of self-control to not go out and just buy all possible Harry Potter books because that's not my approach. But I felt like it was justified in this case. So I'm so happy. If you're interested, I'm now reading The Half-Blood Prince, and it is really cool to read after having just finished Deathly Hallows, because they're, you know, especially Half-Blood Prince is setting up a lot of the final battle, you know, final culmination. Um, yum, yum, yum. Keep that. Um, so it was really, really cool to, like, read about Snape doing secrety things, but I already know the things that he's going to do and why, but here I get, oh, it was very cool. Definitely recommend it if you are looking to reread the series. Um, oh, oh, she's sliding back. We were going to say goodbye. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful week, a uh, wonderful month and get lots of stitching done. I hope you have good luck at thrift stores if you go. I hope you have good luck at bookstores if you go. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me through this rather long, long video. Um, and I'll see you next time. Bye.